what it is, man. Detroit versus everybody, man. Detroit, we rep the hardest, man. We gain the hardest. You know what, you know what it is, man. Detroit, CJ, holla at your boy when we get home. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Help Blaze, at thehelpblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bad bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code GOODFELLA1BOXING. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfella since you get 18% off. We out. All right, it looks like we might get Kell Brook and Terrence Crawford in the bubble November 14th. Let's talk about it a little bit. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. I always knew that Pacquiao was a smokescreen, especially without fans and with travel bans, some still in effect, that they wasn't going overseas to fight, but <clears throat> bringing Kell Brook over to America to fight in the bubble, I um, think it's a good idea. Not sure, you know, if it will be pay-per-view or not. Um, Kell Brook made 2 million pounds last time, plus some pay-per-view revenue with uh, that dude, DeLuca. But uh, as far as the fight, man, it's a lose-lose for Crawford. I think Crawford is always going to be in a lose-lose until he retire. I think him and Wilder and, like, Clarissa Shields will get their flowers. Um, and the reason I say wherever he fight, it's a lose-lose. If he fight or Virgil Ortiz, he was too green. He fight Jerron Ennis, he was too green. He fought Earl Spence. He just came off of Crocs and he fought Danny Garcia. He weighed drain. He fought Sean Porter. Everybody beat Sean Porter. He beat Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman wasn't in his prime. So he fought Pacquiao. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Pacquiao. Oh, you know, he went in the 2009 Pacquiao would destroy Terrence Crawford. So it don't really matter what Crawford do when the public don't like you for whatever reason because the media, you know, basically um, they paint this picture of this dude as, as this. I don't know what it is. Uh, oh, he's too small or. or he, it's off. It all trickles down because he don't talk to certain media. All right, that's just what it really boils down to. So they gotta downgrade whatever he do. And then you know, twenty years down the line, when he get when it's time for him to get his flowers, they gonna flip the script and say, "Oh, Crawford was a great fighter, man." And you know, I was a big Crawford fan back in the, nah, no. You know, at the end of the day, you should pick a fighter based on you know what he represent on. I mean, what he represent in and out the ring. You know what I'm saying? Your family guy. Got another baby on the way. Straight shooter. Truthful guy. You know. They like Earl Spence because a certain person or certain people from Texas push him and they bought in. But at the end of the day, if reckoning day ever come, you know, we, we most of everybody know what's going to happen. But at the end of the day, you hear Derrick James, so Kell Brook would be his toughest opponent. You hear these dudes saying, you know. When Kell Brook lied and say, oh, man, I want Crawford. And they say, oh, Crawford was ducking. Crawford is ducking. Oh, he don't want Kell Brook. That's the best opponent he ever faced. And most people don't know no shit about boxing. Now he going to fight. Now when it sound like he's about to fight Kell Brook. Oh, Kell Brook ain't that good. Or oh, 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 they start diminishing Kell Brook. All right? But then again, he's the same people that's putting Danny Garcia on the pedestal. Danny Garcia at 147 pounds, who should have a few losses. Lamont Peterson should have been lost. Robert Guerrero could have been a loss. You know what I'm saying? He lost to Keith Thurman. He lost to Sean Porter. You know what I'm saying? If anything, Kell Brook got Kell Brook got got a better win than Danny Garcia at 47 with a victory over Sean Porter. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a fact. You know, Kell Brook got a better win than Danny Garcia. Every Danny Garcia win at 47 that mattered been questionable. He ain't be he ain't be one semi-elite guy 47. He made a name off a of smaller guy, Granados, a smaller guy, Brandon Rios. You can make the case <laughs> that the Kill Brook and Danny Garcia fights for Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, respectfully, they on the same level. You know what I'm saying? Only thing that's intriguing about the Danny Garcia fight is Errol Spence can snap back into form after a car accident. That's it. Nothing else. This ain't no fight that puts you over the hump. This ain't no Hall of Fame fight. You know what I'm saying? This ain't this ain't no great fight. Oh, the, the intrigue is, can Danny Garcia knock his teeth out? That's what the intrigue is. Without the car accident, it'd have been another Monday in a pedestrian fight. And that's just my honest truth about the situation, man. But you know, kind of looking at Crawford, whatever you do, they're gonna try to downgrade it and laugh at him. Any real, you ain't a real boxer fan if you laughing because the best fights ain't happening. Oh, look who we fight next, you know? Ha <laughs> ha. Ha uh ha, -huh. look who we fighting there, ha uh ha. -huh. They, they laughing and shit. Ain't no real box. Real boxing fans don't do that. Real boxing fans want to see the best fight the best. And we know the great state of Texas, they don't want to see, they don't want to see Crawford get his hands on, on motherfucking Errol Spence. We, we know that for a fact. All the trolling, the jokes, and 
Oh man, this 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 gonna be like your favorite dog getting hit by a Mack truck, man. That pussy don't want to see it. I'm telling you that right now, they know what it is. They know exactly what it is. They don't want that fight to happen. Earl don't want that fight. I've been telling y'all that. Wouldn't be surprised if he he flew out that fucking car on purpose not to make that fight happen. You know what I'm saying? But you know we we know what it's about. We we know who who want to see the fan win, lose, or draw. Bud lose, draw, win versus Earl Spence. It ain't gonna change my opinion on nothing. You know I ain't gonna I ain't gonna sit here and lie and say oh Crawford got cheated or you know Earl Spence was on the uh, on the sensu beans. You know he was on that juice. No, nah, I'm gonna give him credit where credit is due. Cause that's what real men do. That's what real dudes do. I don't mind saying I'm wrong. At the bare essence, I want to see the fight. But with Kell Brook, you know, Kell Brook, just looking at that fight, you know, Kell Brook, let's say he can comfortably make 47. It's just a bad matchup for him. You know what I'm saying? Um, Crawford got good footwork. Kell Brook ain't got that good footwork. Depends on how Crawford take the fight on. We do know Kell Brook pack a nice little punch. Uh, Errol Spence co-signed that after this fight. said his neck were hurting for weeks. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just, you know, it's just movement. That's all Crawford got to do is be Crawford. Be slick. You know what I'm saying? You could, fight, you could beat Kell Brook a couple ways. You could do it like Errol Spence did it. Walk him down and, and, and just, you know, bang him out and set a high pace. You could sit there and outbox him. You know what I'm saying? Or you could stick a move like he did Victor Post. That's the beautiful beautiful thing about Crawford, you know. Not just because he switched righty to lefty to lefty to righty. It's like he got so many styles. And he ain't got styles where, you know, one style he good at, another style he not. No, he got styles where he good at all of them. You know what I'm saying? He got a style that he good at all. His weakness is going tip for tap. His weakness is sometimes he want to get into them fiery exchanges. You know, in Victor Postal fight, he showed the he showed the discipline not to get the, into those exchanges. But, you know, for Kell Brook to win this fight, I think he got a he got a hope for the uh he got to hope for the aggressive Terrence Crawford. You know, he got to get his one-two off and finish with a left hook. He got to get his combinations off. If he can get that, that that aggressive Crawford that jump in with those looping shots, his straight shots to get there first. And I think uh, I think that would be the difference. If he get a really, really aggressive bud, letting his combinations go. Because he can't move. He don't really move that well. He a flat foot mover. So, but he got a good one-two. But for Crawford, I just think, um, hand speed, foot speed, IQ, power. You know, a lot of people say he's small. You know, for the weight class. But how? I mean, how? I mean, where he not? He not big for the weight class. But how can you say he's small when he every every welterweight he probably go on go on versus here? If you want him to see Kell Brook, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, Errol Spence, all them been at the weight for a long time. They all weight drain. The best of those guys physically, speed and power is gone. I'm telling y'all, the best Sean Porter came and gone. The best Keith Thurman has came and gone. The best Earl Spence has came and gone. Not just because of the accident. We've seen a decline when he fought, you know, Mikey Garcia. He don't. He can't make the weight no more comfortably. You know what I'm saying? That's the issue. Manny Pacquiao is the only one that can comfortably make the weight because he's a natural welterweight at 47 years old. Crawford is the only other one that can comfortably make it out of the ones you care. He's comfortable with the weight. He's not struggling. This is him. So, indeed, he is probably one of the strong, the strongest welterweights out there because he's fighting at a weight that's comfortable for him. That gives him an edge. He ain't struggling to cut weight. And also, he don't let his weight get too high. Only time I see him let his weight get high is after he fought Julius Ndongo when he blew up to 177. But to keep in mind, Mikey Garcia was around 180, 177 as well, too, before the original Olympias cap. And then Olympias had an injury or something. They had to push it back, a hand injury. So that's the only time I've seen Crawford chubby. So, that I mean, when you look at it, people say, oh, he's bigger, stronger. A lot of these dudes ain't as strong as they used to be. They living off reputation. And Kell Brook is one of them. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it'd be nice, you know, had Kell Brook fought Mongolia and got that 54-pound belt, and him and Crawford could fight for that 54-pound belt. That'd be beautiful, but that's not the situation. Um, Kell Brook ain't trying to fight a, a whole bunch of 154-pounders to begin with. You know, I think he had a quote a couple years ago. Someone he wanted to fight him at catch weights. He wasn't confident about fighting at 54 because the guys were bigger. And he, he right. Those are some big-ass 54 pounders from Harrison to Lubin to J Jamel Charlo to Julian J. Rock Williams. You know, those are some really big 154-pound guys. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it is what it is. I think Crawford should take him out. 
you know what I'm saying, at this point. But I never uh, doubt Kell Brook pulling a, a rabbit out of his hat. But hey, but don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you got business questions, car response, your video requests. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel. It's Cash App. CJ Good 313. That's in the description. The PayPal link there as well. Check out our World to Wait boxing playlist for more videos like this. But uh, other than that, man, let me know what you guys think about uh, Terrence Bud Crawford and Kell Brook Posse fight November 14th. MGM Convention Center in the bubble. Sound like Bob's willing to put his money where his mouth is. So I appreciate the love, support. One time for the one time. CJ Goodfellow, Goodfellow Sports TV.